Hi everybody, time for a weekly action plan video. And rather than just sit in my office, I figured uh, the weather's so nice, this would be a good excuse for me to get outside, and take a quick walk around the block. So um, I hope you guys have enjoyed the book of Hebrews. It's been a ton of fun for us to do. And I have, uh, I've had the privilege of being able to work through five of our 12 lessons that we've done in the book. And um, I actually got to start off the series. And I started off the series talking about um, just sort of the purpose of the book. And one of the things I pointed out, and it's because it's a theme that we came back to over and over again, is that one of the purposes of the book is that the author goes to great lengths to point out that the fullness of God and the security of salvation are found fully in the person and the work of Jesus. And that's why he does, that's why he works so hard to point out that for all the ways that God has revealed himself in the Old Testament, through the prophets and through the writings and through history, uh, is that Jesus is superior to every other form of revelation that God has used. When I came back to the book of Hebrews, uh, we were in chapters 9 and 10, and we were talking a lot about how in the Old Testament especially there's uh, a lot of references to blood and how important blood was, especially in the sacrificial system for forgiveness of sins. And I, I gave this illustration about a trailer that I bought and how rusted out it was and the project that we went through to kind of restore it and how it looked great when we were done. But um, the reality is, is just like sin, there was rust inside the trailer that I couldn't even see. And uh, a couple uh, years later, it had kind of a devastating effect when I tried to pull the boat out of the water, out of a lake, and that rust that I couldn't see um, made it very difficult for me to get the boat home. And so the point was, is just that, you know, sin really is serious business. And sometimes we take it really lightly. The next opportunity I had to talk in the book of Hebrews was in chapter 11, which is, of course, one of the highlight chapters of the entire Bible. Sometimes called the Hall of Faith. And I talked about, you know, what, is, what does faith look like? And I had you guys write out your own definitions for faith to start. One of the things I talked about is I said, you know, I kind of walked back through creation and creation science, and I pointed out how um, I think it takes a whole lot more faith to believe that all of this just happened by accident than to believe that there was a God that made it all. And I used some quotes, and one of them I used was Fred Hoyle, the astronomer and scientist who coined the term Big Bang when he was observing the fine-tuning that makes life possible here on Earth. He said, a common-sense interpretation of the facts suggests that a super intellect has monkeyed with the physics as well as the chemistry and the biology. Fascinating. One of the other things I pointed out is that I think it's easy to read chapter 11 at the book of Hebrews and think that these people were superhuman and they didn't have any of the struggles or hardships that we do every day. And that's just not true. In fact, I pointed out a couple of misconceptions. And one of them is, is that um, not all of these people got what they were promised or what they wanted in their lifetime. Two weeks ago when I was reading chapter 13 and studying it with you guys. Uh, I talked about the word Philadelphia and the Philoxenia, and he uses them to talk about how we as Christians should be really good about loving each other, but also about loving the other people in our community. One of the questions that I wrestle with, and I think most other people do too, is wondering if the people that the book of Hebrews was written to if they took it seriously and if it really made a difference in their life. And so I quoted this letter from this guy named Pliny, governor in an area called Bithynia. And this is how he described the Christians. He said they bound themselves by an oath, not to any criminal end, but to avoid theft or robbery, adultery, never to break their word or repudiate a deposit when called on to refund it. And I use that to point out that it seemed like Christianity really was making a difference, not only in the lives of the people that were reading this stuff, but also to people that were watching how these Christians were living. And so this last week, we looked back just a little bit at chapter 11 for a little bit of context and into chapter 13 again and talked about what does it look like to live with that tension of living well here um, in South Lake Tahoe but also living well and taking seriously what it looks like to be invested in the kingdom of God. And um, that's how we kind of close things up. And so we talked about 
how the people in Hebrews chapter 11 remind us of the delicate balance between being invested in the places where we live, but not letting the places where we live dictate the values and priorities by which we live by. And I used the video of the guy on the slack line to talk about one of the keys to be able to live in that tension well is like Hebrews chapter 12 at the very beginning tells us that we need to keep our eyes on Jesus who's the author and the perfecter of our faith. And that's my hope and my prayer for you guys this week that you do keep your eyes focused on Jesus and that you follow and live for him well this week. God bless you guys. Have a great week.